It might seem like a harmless way to keep your account in good standing, but there's a dark side lurking beneath the surface. Today, we're diving deep into the world of minimum payments, specifically for the Capital One Venture Card. For all you travel enthusiasts out there, the Venture Card offers a sweet deal, double miles on every purchase, and even more on hotels and rental cars booked through Capital One Travel. Sounds perfect, right? Swipe, travel, rack up rewards. But hold on a second, because what happens when the bill arrives? That's where the minimum payment creeps in. It's like a tiny voice whispering, just pay a little bit now, you can deal with the rest later. But before you succumb to its siren song, let's crack open the code and understand what that minimum payment truly means for your Capital One Venture Card. First things first, the minimum payment isn't a magic number pulled out of thin air. It's calculated based on your statement balance, which is the total amount you owe after a billing cycle. Capital One uses a tiered system, the greater good. If your statement balance is less than $25, then congratulations. The entire balance becomes your minimum payment. No need for fancy calculations, just settle the small amount and be on your way. 1% Club if your balance surpasses the $25 mark, then things get a bit more interesting. Capital One takes 1% of your statement balance and declares that as your minimum payment. So, if your balance is a cool $100, the minimum payment would be a measly $1. Now, this might sound tempting. Just a dollar? Easy peasy. But here's the catch, and it's a big one. The interest trap. While you might be making the minimum payment, Interest charges are accruing on your outstanding balance every single month. It's like a sneaky monster slowly but surely devouring your remaining debt. The longer you take to pay off the full balance, the more interest you rack up and the deeper you sink into the credit card abyss. Let's illustrate this with a scenario. Imagine you have a statement balance of $1,000 and make the minimum payment of $10, which would be 1% in this case. Great. You've made a payment. But wait. There's an interest rate lurking in the shadows, let's say it's 15%, which is a typical range for credit cards. At the end of the month, you'll be charged $15 in interest on your remaining balance of $990. So, even though you made a payment, your debt actually increased by $5. That's because the interest outweighs the minimum payment you made. This cycle continues month after month, slowly chipping away at your wallet and making it incredibly difficult to ever pay off the entire balance. The minimum payment myth. Here's the harsh truth. The minimum payment is designed to keep your account technically current, not to help you pay off your debt. It's a safety net to avoid late fees and penalties, but it's not a path to financial freedom. Breaking free from the minimum. So, what can you do? Here are some tips to escape the minimum payment trap. Pay more than the minimum. This might seem obvious, but it's crucial. Aim to pay at least the total amount due on your statement to avoid accruing interest. Create a budget. Track your income and expenses to understand where your money is going. This will help you identify areas where you can cut back and free up funds for higher credit card payments. Consider a balance transfer. If you're drowning in high-interest debt, a balance transfer card with a 0% introductory APR can be a lifesaver. This allows you to transfer your existing balance to a new card with a lower interest rate, giving you some breathing room to pay it off without the burden of compounding interest. Remember, the Capital One Venture Card is a fantastic tool for travel rewards, but it's important to use it responsibly. Don't get caught in the minimum payment trap. By paying more than the minimum and taking control of your finances, you can maximize your travel rewards and reach your financial destination much faster. With that said, Thanks for watching and until next time.